and welcome to a new video. I hope that you are happy and healthy. And in this video, I'll be talking through the painting process of this watercolour pigeon. Let's get into it. So before I painted, I drew the outline of the pigeon with pencil based on the angle I wanted using a reference photo that was a good quality so that I can see the different colours and details that I can choose to add. Once I got the sketch, then I pre-mix all the colours that I swatched on the top right hand corner of my page. I mixed a dark bluey grey that was close to the grey in my reference photo as I wanted this to be a bit more realistic, but you can mix whatever colours you want based on what look you are going for. So for the first few layers, I always start with the wet on wet technique where I pre-wet sections of the bird that I want to paint with clean water and then using a medium to thick brush to add my colours. This helps me to have smooth colours and to gently map where the different tones are. I started with the main body and tail of the pigeon first since the neck has bright colours and I didn't want to paint these colours in the same layer as the grey as they may dull the colour down. I painted the neck in a separate layer to avoid this. It's also a good idea to divide things into sections if there is a clear difference in colour or tone to help control each section better and make painting more manageable. When I am painting in the wet on wet layers, I used a medium brush to add my grey and only adding a little paint in the faint grey areas and then more paint in the dark areas. For more control over the paint, I did use a thinner brush at times and if the paint is moving in an area you don't want, you can simply gently brush it away and redirect it to the area that you do want. It's okay if the first layer is loose and a little messy as we'll be building on top of it and it's a guide for the next layers. For the next step, I use the wet on dry technique to add more paint to the darkest part of the pigeon, which was the underside of the body and the tail. Then I sketched in a few more lines to guide me on where to add the dark sections on the feathers and I again painted this using the wet on dry technique to have more control. I also painted in certain outlines to better define the sections of the wings. I went over my second layer and painted in thin lines on the end of the tail and made the underside of the body darker. Of course when you are painting you can decide how dark you want to paint it and how much detail to add. I did add my light blue on one section of the wing and then added lines on top when the layer was dry. To add a feathery texture for the top of the wings, I gently brushed and dabbed at the same time along the length of the wing, but changing to follow the curve of the wing so that it has this patchiness. I suggest to do this quite lightly and build it up. When dabbing, I made sure to leave some small gaps so that it looks more like suggestions of small individual feathers. Then I also painted the tail feathers with lines, making sure the under layer shows where the shadows are, then leaving the layer to dry before adding faint lines on top of it. Just quickly before I continue, don't forget to like and subscribe for watercolour and drawing related videos. I would love for you to learn and create with me. Okay, back to the video. Then I painted the first layer of the neck and head adding my warm purple and turquoise and then the grey for the head. I was careful not to add grey directly next to the turquoise so that it can slowly bleed next to it without blending too much. I also added some of the shadows to the head and while waiting for this layer to dry, I made a few tweaks to the body and feathers. I also painted in the feet with a dark orange carefully with a thin brush and added a little bit of grey at the top of the legs as it will be in shadow as it is directly under the body. 
Then when the neck layer was dry, then I used the wet on dry technique to add short strokes on the neck to give it a feathery texture. But I think I did it a little harshly as the strokes are quite dark, so maybe instead use more water so that it gently overlays on top. Then I used a damp brush with grey paint to make the shadows of the head darker. To gently blend any harsh edges, I clean my brush, remove the excess water so the brush is damp but not dripping, and I gently brush the harsh edges to blend it more smoothly. Then I painted the eye orange, and using a black pen, I added the talons on the feet, the black section above the beak, and when the eye was dry, I drew in the pupil. And that is all for this video. I hope that you enjoyed this painting time lapse and I hope my steps gave you an idea of how to approach painting a pigeon. Although this was my approach, this isn't the only one and my steps are only suggestions. So feel free to adjust your painting to your preference. This was the second watercolour bird I had painted, the third one I have uploaded so far. So if you wanted to see my watercolour robin and rooster video, then don't forget to check them out in my watercolour animals playlist for more. Feel free to comment any watercolour and drawing related suggestions and I will let the time lapse continue for a bit so that it isn't so sped up. And as always, God bless and I'll see you later.